Shalom Saints. Welcome back to another episode of After Hours. Wow, can't believe we're here. Halfway, nigh on halfway through the counting of the Omer as we head towards Shavuot, Pentecost. I can't believe we're at this point already. This year is turning into a blur. Um, but again, the sun's shining, the birds are singing. The, the the world is still action-packed, um, but I'm just enjoying the ride. Um, I figured we've gone into some pretty deep territories over the last uh, few weeks, and I thought it might be a great idea to lighten the load a little bit, switch up the gears. Um, I was recently prompted in the spirit. Um, two witnesses, big up Ange and Martin, and... Uh, I've been led to go down the musical route for today's episode. Um, I think it's uh, it's such a an important uh, part of our spiritual diet. Uh, I've personally always been enamored, fascinated, drawn by, drawn to, and absolutely love uh, music in, in all its different forms, and. Um, Evidently, on this walk, it is uh, uh, such an important factor in in our lives day to day, whether it be uh, for work, for pleasure, uh, for worship. And uh, I thought is is about time that we uh, take a, a dip into the musical pool, as it were. So today I'm going to be laying down the gauntlet. This is a challenge to all of you. Uh, guys out there, uh, both online and uh, within the fellowship, um, what we're going to do today, we're going to go through some uh, some music, some songs that have impacted me, uh, have built up and encouraged me on my walk, uh, both previously and uh, today, and uh, I just think it'd be a great opportunity just to, uh, just to share and... Um, see what uh, see what inspires you guys out there as well. Um, I've personally got a, a very eclectic taste uh, in music, and uh, that hopefully will be represented in my choices today. And um, yeah, I just throw that invitation out. If anybody watching uh, would like to come on and share the the, the powerful impacts of the music. Uh, that has helped shape and mold their walk with Yeshua. Uh, we can uh, we can get into it. So without further ado, I'm going to get the jukebox fired up, and um, yeah, I just want to talk about um, some of these songs and uh, what they've done for me and how they've uh, impacted me and and my life essentially. Because uh, I know with music, it's it's a funny one. Uh, when I first came on the uh, the tour of Path, <laughs> I was literally like throwing all of my music out because it was all secular, all worldly, uh, heavily influenced by uh, pff, demonic principalities, essentially. But um, I'm sure I speak on behalf of a lot of people where you don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater and uh, you soon come to realize that not all music is in fact demonic and there is uh, there is hope. So uh, praise Yah, he built up and restored my love uh, for music and along the way, uh, bit by bit, uh, I came across some, uh, some amazing artists and influences which, uh, which are just um, are great. And uh, I'm of the view that not all music is worship music per se. Uh, we can have a lot of testimonial-based music. We can have uh, music that's um, glorifying of God. It can be uh, a commentary of your walk with uh, Messiah. Uh, it doesn't have to be straight up um, anointed worship music. Um, however, there is most definitely a time and a place for that. Um, but I'm kind of going to be looking at more of the... Um, more of the the, the, the former principles of, of songs that have uh, just encouraged me and uh, ones that I, I enjoy today. So let's have a gander. First up, we have... Right, so 
this one I came across. Now, just for a bit of background context. Now, um, I grew up in uh, the early 90s where hip-hop and rap music uh, really uh, blew up uh, in, in, the, in the secular world, and I was always enamoured by it um, for all the wrong reasons, essentially. However, I, I've always been fascinated by uh, uh, literature, linguistics, uh, poetry, and so, um, yeah, rap, hip-hop, and all of that stuff. Uh, definitely floated my boat. Uh, however, yeah, when I came to the faith, it was uh, it was see you later. Uh, I could not. Uh, I couldn't continue listening to that that sort of music that glorified uh, uh, sin, essentially. So it was an interesting one to to come to. Um, I guess uh, Christ centered rap and hip hop. Um, but before we get into modern contemporary styles. I came across this a number of years ago, and I thought this was most definitely a forerunner uh, to uh, what we would con consider to be contemporary Christian hip hop, if that is such a thing. And um, I thought, wow, like these guys are doing some really cool stuff. Now, I I've always en enjoyed, um, you know, early gospel music, um, Motown. Now, now, for those who are probably aware, a lot of popular music pop music was in its origins church music it was gospel music and over the years it it got more watered down and diluted to the point where we have uh the, the stuff that we have today but back in the day like way way back in the day music was just music about faith and god and um yeah so this i came across this years ago and was like wow they, these guys were really doing it and um, I just thought it was cool. It's just like a real insight into the time and uh, just good fun. And um, yeah. Well, it's Yes, it's so cool. That's the Jubilees with Noah, and it's like it's just so cool. It's such a throwback, um, but it's just like it's cool. It's talent. They can sing. They're doing their dancing and stuff. It's just. Uh, 
yeah, I've just always really enjoyed that. Um, next up is a song. I, I don't know. I, I don't know an awful lot about this artist. Um, again, I probably heard this a few years ago. Um, always for me, a, a good sign of a, a song. Uh, and I know everything's subjective and. Um, all of these selections here are not going to be to everybody's taste and you're probably going to be shouting at the screen going, I can't believe you, you haven't chosen this, that or the other. That's the point, hopefully. But with that being said, um, a good sign of a, of a song is one that you don't ever skip when it comes up on your playlist, whether you're driving, doing your housework or whatever. You, it just always plays. You never, ever skip it. And for me, this is, um, this is one of them. Uh, it's really sweet. Uh, I've always enjoyed the the sentiment of the lyrics, very biblically based. Uh, it's a really nice beat, uh, really well produced, and just a very very sweet song. And it's just never been a skipper for me. This is uh, Lazuli, no greater love.
really beautiful. No greater love than someone to lay their life down for their friends. It's um, yeah, lovely use of sampling. Really simple, really stripped back. Lovely voice, and I just never skip it. I love it, and um, always, uh, always loved it from the first time I heard it. Um, my next offering. Now, uh, as I mentioned at the top there, I, I I've always enjoyed, um, yeah, more kind of, uh, you know, hip hop and rap. Uh, I mean, I've jo- I, I've enjoyed loads of types of music. I still do. Like, I, I couldn't be, I'm, I couldn't be too. I'm just very open to all types. But there's something about. Um, uh, when I, and when I'm talking about hip hop, I'm not talking about the the the, the, the spiritual uh, backdrop of of hip hop and all of the kind of conscious stuff. I'm well aware of that, but the essence of of uh, the use of words to 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 music, so lyricism and, and lyrics that um, glorify uh, God and um, everything in between. What I really enjoy about this this form of music is just how much you can compact into one song. So a lot of songwriting can be, you know, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, and that's that's great. Um, but there's something about the just the uh, the, the volume um, of content in which you can contain can really convey like not only deep messaging but like some serious expressions of understanding of theology and the application of biblical theology within a uh, a song format now I, I really appreciate that this sort of music isn't uh for everybody it can be jarring just hearing somebody um you know rap and do all that stuff like i, I completely get it and because it's not not all of it's for me either uh particularly in in its sort of modern more modern incantations with the effect of uh drill and trap music from the secular then bleeding into uh, kind of rap uh, sonically it can be it can be very difficult to listen to both in terms of the lyrics and and the sound and the the, the overall production so I understand when people are like nah it's just too too much going on uh, but some people I think uh, I, I guess uh, have a capacity for words and have a capacity to to listen and to um, take that in and I, I think I'm one of them that's why I, I do enjoy uh, this form of music now as I said, uh, when I first came to the the faith, I was like, ah, it's all of the devil. I can't listen to any of it. But um, I remember being guided into a certain direction musically, and all of a sudden, everything really opened up for me. And this was after maybe a couple of years on the walk, and it was such a revelation that I could uh, still enjoy music, still enjoy this uh, form of of music, and um, feel like I was uh, close to God whilst listening and, and taking it in. And uh, so th- this this group uh, kind of encapsulates the time for me and uh, uh, a period where it was so, it was beautiful. I was, you know, relatively new to the faith and um, I guess still solitary in a lot of elements. I wasn't in fellowship. So having this restoration at this time was like, it was really important and, and really helpful. Um, so this, this group... Um, I believe they're from Portland, Oregon in the States. Uh, they're called Beautiful Eulogy. And um, I think they've basically got three main albums. And um, they're all very, very, like, I, I really love them. I've listened to them a lot. And so I wanted to maybe pick a track that was, uh, I don't know, I guess... Um, expression uh, an expression of 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 their their musical style um but for me now it's a throwback whenever i listen to their stuff like it just takes me back to a really cool time and um yet their use of instrumentation is awesome their production's great um lyrically um very biblically astute um i think they they kind of come from the reformed school of thought so a lot of it is um i guess quite uh it can be a little bit smarty pants, but I, I think it's uh, I think it's really well done. So I'll, I'll let this play out. Um, this yeah, it's from the album Worthy. Um, I think I want to say it's the s- second or third. 
album. Anyway. <laughs> This present age will waste away. We will surely suffer, but it's a slight momentary trouble. The deconstruction is painful, but the transformation is beautiful. When we, the children of God, are crushed under the heavy affliction of this world, be reminded that it's weightless in comparison to the eternal measure of God's glory. We have lost our eyes for the unseen and have swallowed the false hope of the visible. We must realize the empty grave and revel in the certainty of his resurrection with assurance of renewal, considering it worthy to suffer for the faith. So we will worship while we wait. moment you took everything that I own everything you've given from heaven above and everything that I've ever known if you stripped away my ministry my influence my reputation my health my happiness my friends my pride and my expectation if you cause for me to suffer or to suffer for the cause of the cross if the cost of my allegiance is prison and all my freedoms are lost if you take the breath from my lungs and make an end of my life if you take the most precious part of me and take my kids and my wife it would crush me it would break me it would suffocate and cause heartache I would taste a bitter dark providence but you would still preserve my faith what's concealed in the heart of having is revealed in the losing of things and i can't even begin to imagine a sting that kind of pain brings i would never blame you for evil even if you cause me pain i came into this world with nothing and when i die it'll be the same i will praise your name in the giving and taking away if i have you i could lose everything and still consider it gain it can mean everything it can mean nothing one word makes the difference it can mean everything, it can mean nothing. One word changes everything. It can mean everything, it can mean nothing. One word makes the difference. It can mean everything, it can mean nothing. One word changes everything. Everyone who trusts in you will not be put to shame. If that's not what I believe, then why is that what I proclaim? If it don't change how I live, should I still shout it just the same? If I shout it as loud as I can, will blessings shower down from the heavens and land on my crown? To rinse away all my doubt, and the grace of God is only sweet. To the ears who hear the sound of it, but that sweetness won't be tasted by the mouth of a counterfeit faith. Only the thirsty will drink from the fountain of life and count. Everything is a loss for the sake of being found in Christ. Still beat against the God's word. It's the safest foundation, a safe haven for saints waiting for the glorious great day when our Savior will return. That's the day of restoration. Those who sleep will be awakened, and we will never cease to thank Him. Singing, Worthy is the Lamb to receive glory and honor. Worthy is the Lamb who reconciled us to our Father. Worthy is the one who gives life without end. But if Christ is not raised, and we get still in our sin, if. It can mean everything, it can mean nothing. One word makes the difference. It can mean everything, it can mean nothing. One word changes everything. It can mean everything, it can mean nothing. One word makes the difference. It can mean everything, it can mean nothing. One word changes everything. It can mean everything, it can mean nothing. 
one word makes a difference. It can mean everything, it can mean nothing. One word changes everything. It can mean everything, it can mean nothing. One word makes a difference. It can mean everything, it can mean nothing. One word changes everything. That was beautiful, uh, <clears throat> beautiful eulogy. Um, yeah, just really like them, really like them as a group. Uh, a lot of good stuff, um, great production. And um, yeah, th- th- there's something about, um, it's like when you've got a, a, a movie that you don't quite catch the first time that you need to watch it maybe two or three times to really get all the nuance and uh, all the kind of subplots as well. And I, I find that with a lot of, this sort of music really you have to really li- actually listen to it and try and digest it and work it out a bit and um you know which is uh again in this generation a lot of people don't really want to be doing that they just want everything straight away but sometimes it's you know the good things you have to kind of work for for a bit so um yeah that was beautiful be- beautiful eulogy and um yeah go check out the stuff really worth uh, a listen if you're into that kind of thing. So, my next choice. So much of um, so many principles of the faith and our relationship to Yah is like musical, and the expression of that goes way, way back, and cannot be even more personified than it is than is written in the Psalms. Like, come on. Like it's we got like full books written in, in song format in a, a Holy Spirit inspired declaration, uh, commentary and um yeah, expression of what it means to be created by the creator of all things. I mean, come on, it's 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 one of the uh, God-given gifts that we've uh, been given uh, is the expression of, of our love for one another, uh, our creation, and ultimately our creator uh, himself. And when I... Because I, I know there's a lot of conjecture when it comes to uh, musical forms, particularly in Christian Christian circles... Um, a lot of it can be influenced by the culture and uh, society and the world in general. And sometimes it can be hard to draw the line between what is um, holy and profane because a lot of the time you can make a song and put the, the name of Jesus in it and you've got a, you know, a, a hit. So I, I understand the, 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 the pitfalls of, of modern Christian music. Uh, but at the same time, we're not all built to be listen listening to, to to hymns, you know, and and some people can, and that's great. But my point being, um, I think music really hits the more biblically in line it is lyrically. And what I really love about this next uh, group, the Sons of Korah, which I'm sure you're you're very familiar with, is the um, uh yeah the the rendition of the psalms in in a modern i guess fairly contemporary format and so when you're um you could be worshiping you could be having a moment of intimacy you could just be uh contemplating and med- meditating on the lord and these songs really um help bring that into line so it, i think it encompasses a lot of it's a it's a it's a safe place it's a safe place of expression and a declaration of what it means to to follow christ and um i could have picked a, any number of songs from from this group uh, I, I guess i was fairly new uh fairly late to these guys um but this song in particular um literally only yesterday it hit the spirit hit me hard i was driving i had to i had to skip the song because it was just <laughs> it was becoming a, a health and safety violation um but this song in particular there's something about the core change the structure the sequencing of it 
it, the arrangement is just stunning. It's just beautiful. Now, I, I'm not like overly musically um, uh, astute in the sense that I can't read. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I've got a, 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 a beginner's grasp, shall we say. Um, and I quite like that because I don't quite know how they've managed to like put this together. But whatever they've done, the, the, the changes, the arrangement, it just proper hits me. It, it proper hits me. Um, so this is Psalm uh, 116 uh, by Sons of Korah. <laughs> Oh, and the guitar, I can't think, the guitar is ridiculous.
So that was Sons of Korra. Um, I can't. I, I can't express how much discipline and self control it takes me not to start belting out along to that. <laughs> but I know that's not what you're here for. Um, and I appreciate that this episode may not be the most aesthetically engaging, uh, but that's not the point. Um, I just hope that this can um, maybe even lead some people to music they've not heard before, or it may even invigorate the listeners to uh, to get involved and to tell me why are my choices not the best choices and um, what I should be listening to. Um, so yeah, that was the Sons of Korra. Like they're they're so good. Like they're they're so legit. It's ridiculous, and uh, I'm sure I'm probably uh, preaching to the converted there. Uh, next up, um, this one's for the soldiers. Um, now this artist, uh, he comes under the uh, the uh, I guess the the label, uh, the record label of, of Lamp Mode which were predominantly Christian hip-hop. I guess from uh, some, yeah, maybe about 10 years old they formed, I reckon. Um, yeah, a lot of good artists on there. Timothy Brindle, Believe in Steven, S.O., uh, Has Akeem. So if you're, if you're of a messianic leaning and you like hip-hop, Has Akeem all day long, all day long. That's that's full of the the Hebrew messianic lens. So, uh, if if straight Christian hip hop isn't your thing, um, then yeah, Hazakim. I, I, honestly, for me, I had to limit so much stuff. Like, I really had to like cut off a lot of potential artists and songs that I would like to. So this, by no means, is this a uh, an expression of my only only taste, but. Um, this this uh, this artist uh, Shai Lin, um, I think technically is just like an amazing uh, amazing artist, very uh, um, very versatile in his styles, uh, li- like l- lyrically astute, uh, biblically on point, uh, a lot of soul in his production. It's just it's just good, and I, I could have chosen like any number of songs, but this one always. Uh, it's 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 that essence of like preparing for his f- for his return, and um, how creation yearns for the return of Christ, and um, just I just remember when I first heard th- heard this was like yeah like this is my jam, and uh, again like I said earlier there's certain songs you just don't skip, and this this one I, I don't ever skip. So this is um, uh, Shy Lin with Come Lord C- Jesus Come. Come, Lord Jesus, come. The earth ran away and the skies have flown. 
folks opened up, cause the judge is true. Hey. All shall receive what is justly due. Hey. Who can escape from death number two? Hey. Hey. Lord Jesus, hey. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Hey. Revelation chapter 8, verse 1. When the Lamb opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about a half an hour. Ladies and gentlemen, a moment of silence for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come quickly, Lord. Come quickly, Lord. Come quickly, Lord. Come quickly, Lord. All the elect gather round their Christ. Lord Jesus, see our names in the Lamb's book of life. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Death swallowed up triumph of the king. Where is your victory? Where is your sting? Worthy is the Lamb as the song will sing. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Hey, hey. Classic. That's uh, Shylin, Come Lord Jesus Come. So good. So I have saved my very best till last. And um, I think I probably heard this maybe about four or five years ago. And it struck me straight away and took me to a place that was just... Um, very deep and um, powerful and I know a lot of us on this uh, messianic path are uh, the pursuers of the the Hebrew language and the hidden depths of the language and the meaning and even sonically uh, may not be fluent in the language itself but there's something about the the resonance of that language that just uh, fills the soul in a way that other languages can't um and again, much like the sons of Korah, it is a, it is a, a, a psalm in itself, Psalm twenty seven, uh, and it's called Adonai Adonai Ori. Um, and uh, yeah, the Lord is my light. And a lot of um, a lot of talk it can be geared towards intimacy. Uh, you know, see, be be intimate with the Lord and seek intimacy. And uh, for some, that may not be the easiest thing to do. You know, you know, closing the door and um, being intimate with God, it, it can be quite abstract to some people. But this song in particular took me to a place of intimacy that I hadn't perhaps um, experienced in, in other music before. And um, gosh, it's just, it's just. Um, even now, like, if I want to get to that place, and I recommend, like, maybe not now when you first hear this, but, like, I would recommend you close the door, turn the light off, get a candle on, and just just do what you, you're going to do because it's uh, it's it's just stunning. Um, unfortunately, I don't think the sound quality on this uh, YouTube is, is, uh, is the best, but... Um, that doesn't really matter because you, you'll get it anyway. It's, it's it's ten minutes. It's a bit lengthy, but again, there's a lot of um, kind of different sections of the song which have it has its own character and uh, I don't know. It's it's hard to describe, but um, the singing's beautiful, the arrangement's beautiful, and and obviously the lyrics are, are, are very powerful. So yeah, this is Psalm 27. Adonai Ori, the Lord is my light.
was Adonai Ori, The Lord is My Light by Christine Jackman. Um, yeah, just beautiful and um, uh, really powerful for me. Um, such is the uh, the beautiful subjective nature of music in general. Um, I appreciate that these uh, these songs may may or not be to be uh, may or not be your preferences musically, um, and that's absolutely fine. Uh, but that was just an insight in towards uh, the song uh, songs and the music that impacted me on my uh, my wilderness so far. Um, so there's the challenge, guys. Um, if you're online and there's uh, no way of you uh, making it here in the flesh, then uh, I invite you get involved in the comments. Give us your top three, your top five impactful. Uh, worship uh, songs, uh, songs that people may or may not have heard of. And um, for those in the fellowship, if uh, if you've watched this and you've seen this, please uh, give, give me a shout. Um, we'll arrange for you to come on and uh, go through the, the songs that have impacted your walk and your uh, time in the faith and uh, to share it with uh, with everyone else. Um, so that was uh, my uh, playlist of the wilderness. Uh, so I hope uh, you enjoyed it. A little bit different, and um, yeah, hopefully this uh, this reaches you well. Uh, you are willing. We will see you on the next episode. And uh, yeah, I hope this blesses you. God bless uh, from our house to yours. This has been uh, the uh, the upper room. Shalom. <laughs>